You know what I really like the most? That Hollywood has finally met its match. Take four women. You got Snow White's Rachel Ziegler, new witch star Sydney Sweeney, plus actress Gina Carano, and a woman who's been fighting the good fight for years. Now throw in the United States Supreme Court. And together they are laying the foundation to tear down every studio's didn't earn it policies and bury modern day Hollywood into the ground. People talk about movies, and the movies have to change our lives. So nobody, no movie ever changed anybody's life. They're flickering images on a screen. They're there to entertain us. I don't need someone to educate me. It's the same thing as a sign that says gender-neutral bathroom. What's the difference between gender-neutral bathroom and bathroom? So what does gender-neutral bathroom do, right? It politicizes the human excretory function. It's the same thing with DEI. It's, you know, it's fascist totalitarianism. It's the beginning of the end for the culture of crazy that Hollywood created. It's the end of the films acting as purity tests for the latest trendy victim class, an end to killing video games, comedy, and infecting schools. I think Colombia at this moment, they perfected the, you know, the mastery of how to demonize the West. So North Korea is exact that copy of, you know, there's no black and, I mean, there's no gray area. There's no any nuance, just say, that white men are evil, they are the root of every evil that we have in the world, and the only uh, salvation and only uh, I mean, problem solving is through the communist revolution. Yomi Park is a North Korean defector and an American national treasure that has been battling for years to see common sense regain its crown, because she understands that every lie has an expiration date. And the truth she shares is going to collect on a long overdue bill. Is wokeness in comedy well, on its last legs? Well, well I, I think it has to be. It has to be close to collapse, as my book, good friend James Lindsay said. It's about 12, 18 months before it collapses. Anyone who's normal and healthy and takes a look outside their window today or even watches television can tell that the world has gone mad. You are my favorite evil queen. Me too. Oh my God. I'm also my favorite. We have so much. That ain't no woman. It's a man, man. Disney has upped the ante over the last few years, promoting their very particular brand of DEI. But it is these didn't earn it policies right now that are their main ingredients in their storytelling and all their big screen box office flops, their corporate culture and their theme parks. The very same policies that are pushing away all their families and their fans. And it's costing them. Now the studio has to lower itself and to be able to fight off competition from free streaming studio Tubi. Think about that. Think, hey, what a fall that is from such a tall pedestal. And now on top of that, the Mouse House was just given a wake-up call along with every other Hollywood studio. The Supreme Court just complicated employer DEI programs. The United States Supreme Court, in a recent 9-0 unanimous decision, just gave the Hollywood Hive heartburn in the very same way that Jerry Seinfeld continues to publicly shame all those that killed comedy. It used to be you would go home at the end of the day, most people would go, oh, Cheers is on, oh, MASH is on, oh, Mary Tyler Moore is on. Well, guess what? Where is it? This is the result of the extreme left and PC crap and people worrying so much about offending other people. Mm -hmm. When you write a script and it goes into four or five different hands, committees, groups, here's our thought about this joke. Well, that's the end of your comedy. The court ruled that a female police officer can sue based on being discriminated on DEI policies. Now, but it means more than that, this case. It has opened the floodgates that it will eventually lead to millions following in her footsteps. Now, toss in the court's 2023 ruling that struck down affirmative action admissions in the universities, plus a case that's working its way through the Florida courts. And this all signals the eventual end of Hollywood's didn't earn it policies. And that's as it should be. DEI makes a mockery of Western culture because what it does is tries to replace work ethic and talent by recruiting trendy quotas. And the only thing that accomplishes is to divide people instead of uniting them. When you say you didn't know your history and the contributions of the Latinx community in the Americas or in America specifically, why do you think that is? Psychosocial erasure. You know, our, our contributions are erased for obvious reasons. We're such a huge force in America. You know, half of America used to be Mexico. No way. No way. Times are changing, and it's all happening because of four women.
Take Gina Carano. She started as a fighter who jumped from the MMA ring and went to the big screen, and that led her to Star Wars The Mandalorian series. Now she is fighting the biggest foe in her life and to face down Disney's dark empire after the studio decided to fire her for exercising her rights of free speech. This is how I found out I was fired. Online. On Twitter. <laughs> like, they didn't call me. They didn't say we're letting you go. You know, it was just... Um, She's denigrating people off of cultural and religious beliefs, and she's abhorrent. Disney really likes to pretend that they promote strong, independent women that think for themselves. But that's exactly what they got when they hired Carano. A woman, not an obedient drone who does what she tells them, but one who has the strength to stand up for her principles and not push propaganda. I've fought in the ring, and I do have hot blood. Um, but it's usually hot blood when it deals with people being bullied. I don't have a problem with power. I have a Huge problem with abuse of power. Now with the backing of the world's richest man, Elon Musk and his team of lawyers, Gina is striking back at the very heart of Disney's power, their pocketbook, their bad practices, and their false public image. But don't make any mistake about it. Gina isn't just facing Disney alone. She is taking on the full force of the entire Hollywood machine. But again, you know that when you get attacked in the Hollywood trade press, that's because the company you worked for directed those reporters to attack. Right, and I am learning that more and more. The good news is, is that ever since Corona was fired and started to fight back, Disney lost more than they could ever imagine. Hmm. They lost $140 billion from the day they fired you. <laughs> wow. I know that's not funny. I mean. Well, it kind of is. On the flip side of Gina, you have an actress who, without even realizing it, just being herself, nearly single-handedly burned Disney's image right down to the ground. The, the original cartoon came out in 1937. There is a big focus on her love story um, with a guy who literally stalks her. Once more, I have but one song. Weird. Weird. The Mouse House's new live-action Snow White, played by Rachel Ziegler, is the exact opposite of Corano. She's neither humble nor honorable, just another in a long line of hungry ego alerts looking out for herself. Have you ever been to that Snow White ride at Disneyland? I get stopped for photos every time I'm online for the Snow White ride, and it is the... I have to pretend like, oh, God, oh, well, crazy that we're in front of this. I have to hand it to Rachel Ziegler, though. Just by being herself, just being bad, was good enough to wake up more people than Disney's 10 box office flops ever did. Think about that. How did she do it? Because the actress bought into every one of Hollywood's lies. One of the producers last year in Hollywood wanted to make a movie out of my story from my first book. And he sent me a movie script. And he says, China was my promised land. I asked him, like, what the heck are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Right? And he said, this is the only way we can make a movie about North Korea in current Hollywood. Just like Yeonmi Park lit the beacons of hope for freedom, so has J.K. Rowling done for years. She's been fighting the good fight on many fronts. And it all started when she wanted to help children first. I came across a photograph of a small boy who appeared to be caged. I wanted to turn the page. In fact, I half turned the page and then I felt very ashamed of myself and I thought no if it's as bad as it looks you have to do something about it. Today Rowling is no different she works from morning to night to still rescue kids. The only difference now is that she has expanded her mission to include her battle for free speech and true equality and you know ever since she's done that she's been attacked on all sides from people that she loved from people she made and from everyone in Hollywood in the exact same manner that Carlson shared with Carano. People who write about television and movies are directed to the word by the PR departments at the television and movie companies. Right. So there's no independent press that writes about the movies or about television. Right. Even cable news. Like the big cable news websites are all controlled by the PR departments. Right. It's true in Hollywood. Funny enough, Rowling never made Tinseltown her primary focus. Nevertheless, the fight that she has taken to the core of the culture of crazy has had some very positive side effects because that very same culture is the beating heart of the Hollywood Hive. It's a big club and you ain't in it. You and I are not in the big club. By the way, it's the same big club they use to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. The good news is, I have no doubt that J.K. Rowling is going to leave a legacy of not only saving women and children, but she's going to help to stop the modern day studios and their showboat Muppets that they hire to lecture us into submission. See, 
The beloved Harry Potter author shared a few years ago in a commencement address she gave at Harvard some of her most valuable life lessons that she had learned. And one of them was how to win and become unbeatable. How did she do that? By embracing failure. She was able to set herself free to achieve the impossible. Now that is someone you cannot beat. I stopped pretending to myself that I was anything other than what I was and began to direct all my energy into finishing the only work that mattered to me. I was set free because my greatest fear had been realized and I was still alive and I still had a daughter whom I adored and I had an old typewriter and a big idea. And so rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life. The last woman to join the four horsemen of Hollywood's eventual apocalypse is the very same actress that Hollywood primed, promoted, preened, and pushed through every major mainstream media news outlet until the very day that she struck a chord with middle America. Actress Sidney Sweeney catapulted to fame because of the show Euphoria. Then she survived Sony's Madam Web movie disaster and recently starred in Anyone But You. One of the last few years, global successes for romantic comedy. I mean, we're talking about a movie that's already grossed over $210 million on the back of a $25 million budget. But you expect that Hollywood would be raving about it? Not a chance. That is because Sweeney is rocking the woke boat. See, men love looking at her, but women in entertainment absolutely loathe her. A top Hollywood producer is slamming Sydney Sweeney, saying she isn't pretty and can't act. Now online critics and newspapers are divided into two camps. Some see Sweeney as an existential threat to their ideology, and others view her and sing her praises as a harbinger of doom coming for the culture of crazy. Wokeness is no match for Sydney Sweeney's undeniable beauty. We've been pressured into pretending everyone is beautiful except for those who actually are. See, Hollywood woke preaches that beauty is exclusionary, and therefore everyone has the responsibility to make themselves as miserable, unhealthy, and as unattractive as is humanly possible, so all those people who don't feel good about themselves might have a shot at feeling hopefully good about themselves. Then you have Sidney Sweeney, a throwback to the Hollywood bombshells of the past. Yet, yeah, just like Rachel Ziegler, she has no interest in fighting an ideological battle. She's not there to challenge the echo chamber elite of big screen corporate cinema. Nothing like the sort. She is a woman simply being herself. She embraces her femininity instead of rejecting it. She celebrates beauty instead of denying it. And that is a problem for Hollywood. It was always my dream to be an actor. But if that failed, I also presented them with a backup plan. <laughs> Sydney Sweeney represents a return to normalcy and saying goodbye to all the years we've seen female leads being turned into stick figures as butch men with bad buzz cuts. That time is coming to an end. And we have four women to thank for it. Some who've chosen to step in and fight an ideological battle and others just by being themselves. But all of them, to everyone, have made the culture of crazy sweat. And that is a good thing that leads to real hope on the horizon. Now, if you enjoyed the video and found value in it, hit subscribe, smash the like button, share your thoughts in the comments down below, and share this video with everyone you know. And to win every battle and stay true to yourself, all you have to remember is, we never bow down, we never bend the knee. Always forward.